So here we have two cars with the same engine, but a little bit different. So this is my E36 M3 and my S52 E34, if you guys aren't familiar with these cars. And the focus of this video is to do a quick little snippet on OBD1 S52 versus OBD2 S52. And hopefully at the end, we will get a side-by-side -side comparison of these two racing next to each other to see the difference. So yes, it's not an S52 and an E36 both ways, but I think what's even better to showcase the abilities of an OBD1 S52 is a heavier, bigger chassis with that engine and seeing what it will do next to an OBD2 S52 in a lighter uh, chassis. So what is the difference between an OBD1 and an OBD2 S52? Well, an S52 B32 stock is an OBD2 engine. It came in the 96 to 99 E36 M3s. That's what they are native to, which is this car right here. OBD2 is onboard diagnostic two. It's what we're familiar with in basically any car from 96 to current day. It is the easily tunable option. It is the more uh, involved, more basically smarter. It's the smarter management system for uh, cars of this era. And OBD1 is the pre-96 um, onboard diagnostics. So this went up until 1995. I'm not sure when it got introduced. I want to say it was like 91 or something because I think it came after M30 cars. So maybe only 91 to 95. Don't quote me on that. But OBD1 is basically the old dumber thing. The only way to tune OBD1 is to get chips for the ECU. These things you could plug in a scanner, you could plug in a computer, code them all you want. Easily tunable versus not so easily tunable. Um, OBD2 is a better engine management system. It is smarter, it can, there's more possibilities with it, but OBD1 is um, just original, OG, true, simple engine management. A lot of people don't like it because it's hard to pinpoint issues when you're having them, if you're not really familiar, but when you're an OBD1 master like me, you can uh, dig to the bottom of what's causing issues on them. They're a little stupider, but still possible to figure them out. But where the difference is on these BMWs is OBD1 came with what is called the M50 manifold. OBD2 came with the OBD2, S52, M52 manifold. And the M50 OBD1 manifold has wider runners, which allows for more power. And that is the heart of the power increase you get with an OBD1 car. And that is why people OBD1 convert S52s. Not only does it make it easier to put into something like an E34 or an E30, but you get a power boost, believe it or not, which may sound counterintuitive as to how a older car, older management system makes more power, but it does. And not to, I don't want to put out misinformation. You can run an M50 manifold and keep the car OBD2. Uh, you have to buy a kit. It's kind of expensive. It's the M50 manifold kit. They sell them. So that way you can keep the thing S52, or S50, OBD2, but M50 manifold and you can get the power. I only kept this OBD1 because it's way easier to adapt it into an E34, which never came as OBD2. Um, but basically, if you're OBD1 converting an S52, what do you do? You put the OBD1 manifold on it. You have to change the uh, couple sensors, knock sensors, crank sensor, cam sensor, vano solenoid, coolant hoses, the throttle body, obviously, the MAF. And I want to say that's it. If you want to watch me OBD1 convert an S52, I have a full series on it when I built this car. But off the top of my head, that's about all I can think of that's different. Coil packs interchangeable. So much is interchangeable. OBD1 has 102 sensor. OBD2 actually has four, um, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, to OBD1 convert to S52, you basically just need the ECU. You need the OBD1 harness. That's what you need, the OBD1 harness. The OBD1 manifold, like I said. And then get a tune of your choice. So I got the RK chip in this car. This car is the stock OBD2 with, I can't remember the tune, but it is tuned. So that's basically your quick little rundown of OBD1 versus OBD2. Not a whole lot of difference, but the OBD1 manifold is where it's at and you get the right tune and supposedly you can make more power from an OBD1 S52. And I think that we will see that in this video and I think we'll be pretty surprised by the results. Haven't done it yet, but whenever I can get a driver here to help me do this race, we will go film that. 
As for mods, in case you guys think it's unfair, both of these engines are bone stock, original engines, stock internals. Um, this E36 M3 is a stock car, full catted exhaust, everything, just a muffler delete, tuned ECU, stock airbox, stock exhaust, everything else, stock. The A34, again, fully catted stock OBD1 exhaust, but it does have the OBD2 manifolds, I kept those, but they are both catted, they are both tuned, they are both stock internals, OBD1 M50 manifold, stock SD2 manifold, otherwise they are a dead even car. So as far as we're concerned, both bone stock S52s with tunes. So this should make for an interesting race. I did this out in Cali, but didn't really get definitive results because we only did one pull. So without further ado, whenever my driver gets here, let's go out and take these things and put them head to head just for a quick little what an OBD1 SV2 can do versus a stock OBD2. Okay, so I found my driver here for this race. Dakota, you guys have met him with the SV4 E34. So, like I said earlier on, we're doing an OBD1 versus OBD2 SV2 side by side race. We're gonna go do a pull or two. What do you think is gonna win here? I'm just gonna go with this because it's lighter. Lighter car. So, lighter car but less horsepower, technically, kinda, because M50 manifold on the blue car. That one has an M50 manifold? Yeah, it's OBD1 with well, an M50 manifold. Depending how fast we'll pull, then I'll make this faster. It'll have more torque. No, the M50 manifold has more torque. At the high end. At the high end. Oh, you think so? Yeah, that's what they did it for. For high end torque. They, I didn't even know that. They, they went to a skinnier manifold later to, for low end torque. Oh. Okay, well, there we go. I didn't even know that. So, it, it'll be pretty close. But you it'll think E36. I, I don't know what I think. I'm, I'm going to go undecided here. We'll see. We could... That thing could, could really astonish us. And he brought up the diff ratios, which I forgot to mention. They should be the same. That's a 323 LSD. E36 M3, I believe stock, should be a 323 LSD as well. Uh, if it's not, it's something close. Yeah, if it's not, it's like a 293 or something. 315. 315, something very close. So they should be pretty much, both ZF5s, they should be geared pretty closely. So we're going to go out there, try to get some nice camera angles here for the pull, and see what they do. All right, so we're on our way. Dakota's following me in the E34. I told my brother to drive the E36 in case this car just falls apart. Uh, you know, stretch tires and low tires. I don't wanna, um, you know, low tread. I don't want him to be responsible for a blowout. We're gonna go to the spot that I've designated a good spot to do this. These are not fast cars, so we don't need like a ton of room and things don't have to get too dangerous here. So I'm thinking we'll just go to an 80 mile an hour pull, uh, starting in second, and we'll go to 80, 80, 90, and just kind of see, uh, See who who wins here. There's debris all over the place from uh, a storm we had last night. But uh, yeah, hopefully, I think this camera should get you guys a pretty decent view. Once you hit that bog, you're kind of like screwed. 
Did we just see the M50 manifold come into full swing? Yeah, I think with the extra couple hundred RPM and the intake, I think that's why. Yeah, okay, so you said the S52 manifold has more torque down low, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's what we saw, because I walked away at the at the beginning, and then you just blew by me. Yeah. Holy, holy crap. This is literally live action M50 versus S52 manifold stuff here, fellas. Let's do 30 to 80 and okay. let off as soon as you get to 80, whether or not you, so we've seen that you will actually pass me if we keep going, but yeah. if we were to cut it at 80, well, let's see, I'm interested to see, because I didn't, I didn't look at our speed the last one. thing hits pretty hard in the low range and then it kind of goes to things making me jealous of how quiet and comfy it is compared to mine and i didn't think mine was that bad <laughs> hey man that's i built that car for a road trip and i think i did a pretty good job here at 30. So that's the thing, I rebuilt the Vanos on that car, and that Vanos like kicks in like harder than I've ever felt a Vanos kick in. So so it really comes down to what speed and what rev you're at, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. When we started in third gear at 40, so you're at a lower rev to start, uh, I really had him. I let, I let off and he caught up, but it's hard to say because I let off, but I'm gonna have to go back and watch some of, these, some of this footage and these cars are close, but mind you that that E34 is a good 3,000 or not, it's a good 300 pounds more. Because now I've weighed 
a felony form turbo e36 useless car and his car weighed in at just over 3,000 pounds no driver and my e34 with the turbo weighed in at just over 3,300 pounds with no driver and that compared to my Calypso are the same exact car fully fully interior full everything um, that might not have a spare in it but I don't think the Calypso did either so anyway that should be about the same exact weight as the Calypso this should be the same exact weight as Eustace's car because they both had turbo kits which might add a little bit of weight so I don't know it's hard to say but so you're looking at about on average I mean Dakota weigh about the same so you're looking at about a 300 pound weight gap and you're looking at the E34 beating this car I would say more times than not more pulls than not that car seems to be taking off and you can really see the manifold kicks in it makes a huge difference this thing hits down low and just bogs that thing once you get up in the revs and the vanos hits and he probably has a little bit more red line than me because the tune he just goes so if you can imagine then an obd1 s50 not an obd1 I, I, I keep saying that i don't want you guys to think it has to be obd1 basically the m50 manifolds where all that comes in and you can obd1 convert it or you can um do, do the m50 manifold swap but when you put an obd1 manifold on these cars uh, if you can imagine the same S52 in a E36, two E36s, right, with one M50, one not manifold, the, the OBD1 or the M50 manifold E36 would walk by every time because 300 pounds greater and it's still kind of keeping up, if not walking away, which is pretty pretty insane. So these, these, that's that's an impressive upgrade, especially because it's it's not very expensive. Uh, I mean, you're talking 150 for an M50 manifold and, you know, tuning options or whatever, so. Well, there we have it. What do you think about those results? Jesus, this wind is crazy. I think that it just depends on which car's got what tune and manifold. So it was like different speed. Different I know, it, it was so like inconsistent. But I would say that the E34 consistently either caught up or straight up beat me. Yeah. That's which true. is pretty impressive. So. Yeah, that thing has a down low advantage, but then once you're ringing it out, this thing every time, and I was t saying on, when I was filming the whole time, we were talking 300 pound difference there, that's pretty impressive. So, caught you off guard? Yeah, I'd say so. Impressed? I figured, I figured it was going to be not as dramatic, I guess. Yeah, it's, 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 it, yeah, well, it's pretty, it's dramatic when you think about like the fact that it's just a lighter, a lighter versus a heavier car with the same engine, pretty much, yeah. more or less with just the intake manifold. So it's like what, like for like two hundred dollars, you can make your E thirty six like pretty like pretty quick. Tune. Oh, with, with the tune and the the conversion. Yeah, I, it, I feel like that makes a big difference. With yeah. The tune and the manifold. Because I keep saying OBD one converting, but realistically, you can run the MVD manifold. You just have to buy the conversion kit, yeah. and then you could keep it OBD two. So yeah. I don't want this video to be misleading or anything because it, you know it it could be either OBD. It's just the empathy manifold. Anyway, Dakota, thank you for driving. Hell yeah. That was a lot of fun. Drive, uh, yeah, okay. of course. Yeah, his is broken, so he wants to drive mine. That's why he's here, picking up an oil pump. OBD1 versus OBD2, S52, side by side. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.